Hello everyone, and do I have an amazing video for you today. That's right, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is getting an asymmetrical horror game coming in early 2023. But before we can get into what we know about the game so far, let's watch the game trailer. I'll be honest, when I first saw it, I went giggle skipping down the hall to wake my fiance up and show it to her. Then I immediately signed up for the beta. But now, let's sit down and look into what we can expect from the game. To begin with, Killer Clowns from Outer Space will be a 3v7 game. Three clowns against seven humans. Who plays a clown and who plays a human is randomly chosen at the start of the match. You can set your role preference, but there's no guarantee that you'll get it. In order to win, the clowns must kill all the human players and all of the human NPCs. For the humans to win, they must kill the clowns, destroy the clowns' spaceship, or save the human NPCs. To do this, each faction comes with its own classes with their own strengths and weaknesses. Here's a quick reference chart. Each class for the humans has a similar mirror class with the clowns. Bikers are strong, prepared to fight, loud, and slow. Clowns have the brawler with a high strength and low mobility. Cops are perceptive, good with guns, unlucky, and have low stamina. While clown rangers are stealthy and have great utility, low stamina, and low mobility. Punks have high stamina, are good against obstacles, but are slow to recover. Tank clowns are very strong and can attack in melee and at range. They can break through walls, but they have slow recovery. Rednecks are good at fixing stuff, have the largest inventory size, but have poor observation skills. Tracker clowns are nimble and intelligent, but aren't as strong as other clowns. Teenagers are nimble and stealthy, but have low health and a small inventory size. And clown trappers can plant traps, which they can hide in, but overall, they're not very stealthy. During gameplay, if clown players kill a human player, the human player can take over a human NPC and swap classes, so long as there's an NPC with the class that they want still around on the map. Human players can do this as long as there are still NPCs left on the map. However, each time a human player dies, that means there's fewer NPCs to take control of for the other players, and less work for the clowns to do to win. So choosing the correct NPC and surviving as long as possible to keep the amount of lives available for the humans high will be crucial. We also know that each class will have a range of 10 attributes which they can excel in or do poorly. For the humans, we know that strength, speed, luck, stamina, perception, recovery, agility, health, Furtiveness and inventory are their stats, or at least something along those lines. For clowns, we know that strength, stealth, stamina, agility, intelligence, robustness, rush, acuteness, laughter, and bloodthirst will be their traits. Or, again, something similar, because we don't have all the names for the stats just yet. It is unknown if a clown player can rejoin the match if they die or not. There is some possibility for it on the website in a quote that reads, If you die during a match, you will be able to choose a different class if it's still available, making the experience even more fun and adaptable and giving you the opportunity to turn the tables at any moment. This suggests to me that the three clown players choose a single class at the start of the match, and if they die, they can return to the match as a different class so long as that class hasn't been chosen by another player yet. This would mean that there are a total of five clowns each game controlled by three players. So each side has multiple lives to go through before a player is permanently removed from the match. As far as combat goes, we know that the humans will have weapons such as knives, rifles, and what looks to be a firecracker in this picture. There will likely be a mix of rifles, pistols, and shotguns since all three made an appearance in the movie. We also know that the clowns will have the popcorn bazooka, big goofy hammers, bats, and invisible cars. Humans will be able to recover health by eating food, while we know the clowns can recover health by using the laugh out loud ability. Yes, 
the clowns actually lol. While they only have a limited number of times that they can use the lol ability, it heals them based on their laughter attribute. Also, the lol ability can parry attacks and make the clown invulnerable for a short time. It can also have other effects such as slowing humans down, damaging them, or both, or a multitude of other effects that haven't been shown yet. The lol also buffs other clowns in its radius and can be used as a tactical power-up or a distress signal to let other clowns know that they are nearby and that they are in need of help. Clowns using the lol ability won't be able to move though, so humans could have a chance to escape or even find some weapons. This would suggest that the lol is a longer effect and not just a quick thing that happens for a moment or two and then ends. Also, the lol has a significant cooldown, so clowns can't use it often and need to choose when it's best to use it. Teamwork is going to be key in the game, and to help with that, the devs at TerraVision Games have implemented an in-game voice chat function to assist. For humans, voice chat is based on the distance between you and the other players. We don't know if they'll implement a walkie-talkie system like in Friday the 13th or not yet, but time will tell. What we do know is that whenever you talk, everyone can hear you. And by everyone, I mean everyone on both teams. That's right, humans can hear the clowns, and the clowns can hear the humans. However, this isn't exactly equal. Clowns can hear and understand the human players if they're within distance of their voice. Humans cannot understand the clowns even if they are within the distance to hear them. All the humans will hear is the creepy language of the clowns unless the clown speaking chooses to let them understand. This can be done as an attempt to trick the human players taunt them, or whatever. The point being, however, is that the clown controls if the human can understand them or not. A standard round of killer clowns from outer space will start with all the humans spread out across the map of Crescent Cove. Human players will only be able to tell if another human character on screen is an NPC or another human by interacting with them. Human players will need to begin arming up, moving around the map to gather weapons and supplies, and hopefully muster up together for a better chance of survival. The clown players will immediately get to work killing and capturing human NPCs and players if they can find them. The clowns start off extremely strong, but the longer the game goes on, the more chances the humans have for getting what they need to take on the clowns. There are also going to be dynamic objectives which can happen which let one side win the match if the objective is completed. Typically, however, most games will be decided by whether the clowns can kill or capture all of the humans, or if the humans can achieve their goal of sabotaging the ship or killing the clowns. Outside of standard gameplay, we know that you can level up each human and clown class to unlock new abilities. We don't know if this will be similar to Friday the 13th, where this is done completely out of the match and the builds you create carry into the match, or if they're done during the match and reset after every game. That's pretty much everything we know from the game so far, and I'm pretty excited for it. However, there are a few things that I would like to see in the game. For instance, I would like to see the ability for teams to queue up as the clowns specifically. We all know that asymmetrical games try to make the balance as even as possible, but in the end, the power roll always goes to the side with the larger numbers, and in this case, that's the humans. I understand the reasoning for randomized rolls. It means that you just need 10 people and the match can begin. The game doesn't have to look for a specific amount of each faction, and it means you can avoid the nasty killer main versus survivor main toxicity that grows in these communities. Both reasons are a win-win, and are valid for the decision for randomized roles. But hear me out. Clown-specific cues could be made for friends who want to play together as the villains. This is the first time in any asymmetrical horror game that this is possible, and allowing for people to queue up like this together would be groundbreaking. I would say that a team of two to three friends should be able to queue up specifically as the clowns. Then the game will just be looking to fill the match up with more people as usual. If the match already has people willing to play the clowns, it's just looking to fill up the rest of the slots. No muss, no fuss and you get the chance to say you did it first. People would flock to the game just for this feature alone. Online competitive teams love to play as the survivor because they can group up and work together as a team. So their ability to work together as the clowns would make for a huge spin on the genre. After that, I'd love to see a variety of vehicles for players to get around the map in, like the ice cream truck or police cars for the humans, or a tiny car for the clowns that they can all pile into and hop out of for comedic effect and practical transportation. I'd also love to see a variety of weapons for the clowns, such as the acid pies, the golf clubs, spiked bats, clubs, axes, etc., like they had in the end of the movie. Also, I'd love to see way more clown designs, including the ones we see in the spaceship at the end of the movie, as well as the female clowns. I'd also like to see 
see the popcorn clowns made into traps that can be set in items that humans might search through for weapons or supplies. Also, I'd like to see an unlockable ability for the trapper class that can take an NPC and set it up as a puppet so that they can call for players and trick them into coming closer and using human or clown weapons against them once they get too close. And we can't forget about the ability to make a man-eating shadow puppet. There are just so many possibilities with this franchise that could go into this game that it would take me forever to list them all. So I'm gonna cut the video here. I hope you guys were able to learn a few things about the game that you didn't already know yet. I'd like to know what you hope to see in the game, and if you have any questions or concerns that I can look into and maybe get back to you about, let me know down in the comments. I hope you all have a great day, and as always, stay positive.